Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get your free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv. We'll click the link in the video description down below. Hey ladies and gents and welcome to the cold waters of the Denmark Strait and welcome back aboard the USS Boston. So for the last couple of days the Boston has been mostly hunting whiskies in the Norwegian Sea. It seems the Soviets were very interested in getting infiltration units into every location they could find. But then suddenly a full-blown invasion of Iceland begun. The Boston has been tasked with intercepting part of this enemy invasion fleet, specifically a task force heading for Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. Intel strongly suggested that this fleet would be making its way to Reykjavik via the Denmark Strait, so we've been laying in wait for about two days, and sure enough our targets have just arrived. Now we've entered this zone at only five knots, because we were stationary on the world map, we enter battle at minimum speed, which means at this point there is absolutely no way that any ship in in this task force has been able to hear us. So I'm currently going through the process of identifying exactly what we're dealing with. At the moment we have a Udaloy, a Cashin, and three alligators. The alligators will be the transports that are moving troops to take the capital city. It does seem rather light though. We have no additional contacts. I would have expected more escorts than this at this point. The Cashin is actively pinging but there is no way known it can actually detect us at this point. That being said, I am not prepared to take any risks. So we're 30 degrees down on the planes, 30 down on the ballast, and we're going to dive for the thermal layer and put ourselves in the shadow zone. This will minimize the chances of them detecting us even when they get into what would be normally effective range. Currently a 42% solution on the Cashin. The Udaloy. Yeah, I thought so. Just concentrating on the map in the bottom left hand corner here at the moment. If you watch closely on the sonar pings, we'll just wait for it. There's the ping from the Cashin. And there's a ping that looks like it's coming from the alligators. Now, the alligators don't have sonar, so there is something amongst those alligators that I haven't detected yet that is able to admit sonar. Another escort. The Udaloy, on the other hand, is not actively pinging, so they're not looking for anybody, they're just sniffing about. The Udaloy just jumped position, so its solution has changed. We are going to have to deal with that Cashin. It's not a risk just yet, but it will be the first ship that actually detects us when the time comes. And we're still not seeing that... No, Udaloy is now pinging as well. Uh, we're still not seeing the... 57% solution. Uh, seeing the other escort that's amongst the alligators at this point. So if I blow something up... 61% now. We've got a direction. They're heading straight towards us. Okay. Want this to arm early. That's odd, I thought I selected Torpedo 1. Uh, regardless, I'm going sonar off for this one, and I'm launching from my left hand side tubes at this point, and having the torpedo curve around and cross to my right, using the submarine to hide the launch transient. This will prevent the Cashin from being able to hear the torpedo being released. And hopefully, without it going into active pinging when it goes live, it will be unaware of the torpedo's approach until it's already too late to maneuver out of its way. And we just got contact seven. And that is a Cashin. 
and we have another contact that has popped up and then vanished in the distance. That's right, hopefully we'll get that back. The idea here is if we blow up one of their ships, the escorts are all going to get very angry and come and start looking for me. And in the process, they're going to make a lot of noise, which is going to let me know where they are. The good part is, firing this way, they shouldn't be aware of where I am. And Torpedo has acquired target. That was a perfect release. And there she is. Contact Sierra 2, Keshin eliminated. Now that'll get their attention. Now the downside is the alligators are likely to turn around and run away at this point, but I'm not overly... Uh, shh. Same bug as last time. Hang on, I might be able to fix this. Okay, problem solved, I think. Yes, alright, so torpedoes are now ready. We'll leave them on passive mode. Torpedo 1 away, we'll send that one after the alligators. I'm going to set torpedo 2 to active homing, because I haven't got as good a solution on the second alligator, but once again we'll release. And hopefully those two will pick up targets and take them out as they try and run away. And that should clear the field for us to engage these escorts. And that's a helicopter. All right, cut line one, reload, cut line three, or sorry, line four, reload, and it's time for us to change our position slightly. Yeah, we're still, we're sitting right on the thermal layer. We want to get a little bit further down, and let's fire off a moss so that this helicopter and its dipping sonar has something to listen to that isn't us. Won't go ultra quiet, I'll just maintain five knots. 25 down on the planes, we'll just turn away from the direction of the moss. I want to head further south anyway. And that should put us right nicely in the shadow zone. And with all the noise the moss is making, there should be no way that the helicopter's dipping zone can actually pick us up. Ah, the bug earlier on with the torpedo tubes incidentally was being caused by my throttle. For some reason the throttle input was affecting the tube selection. I'm not entirely sure how that works considering you can't actually play this game with anything but the keyboard and mouse, at least not that I'm aware of, so strange. Anyway, we've accelerated now to two-thirds speed. I'm just going a little bit deeper just to make sure we're nicely under that thermal vent and we are not in a position where we can cavitate if we need to suddenly go faster. I don't want to give these guys anything more than they can get. As much as I've got that moss sailing away at the moment, that helicopter is almost on top of me. That being said, even at 10 knots I don't think it can actually hear me. If it could it would be airdropping torpedoes directly on top of my position and every single escort in the area with the capability of firing uh, missile delivered torpedoes to this spot would be doing so. At the moment I've got no missile launch transients, there's nothing hitting the water, no splashes, it's just the helicopter having a look. And yeah, I don't think it can actually see anything. Now this is interesting. The Udaloy is heading west. It looks like one of our torpedoes has got onto the tail of the alligator. No idea where the second torpedo has gone at this point. Yeah, that Udaloy is looking like a problem. It looks like it went... 
It looks like it went west to try and get around the wreck of the Cashin. The Cashin will be making a hell of a racket, cavitating, blowing bubbles everywhere since we sunk it. And the Udaloy has gone wide in order to be able to hear what's going on. It's trying to find us. And that is the sonar ping of an active torpedo. That is our second torp that has the active sonar. And that almost sounded like an explosion. No, we've still got an active ping. I'm still having some issue with these tubes, so I might need to completely disconnect my throttle in a moment. Anyways, regardless... Tube 4 at Udaloy. And we're gonna cut the wire, start a reload, and then... take it 30 down on the planes. And let's go 30 degrees to port. And 30 down on the ballast. Start turning away from the torpedo and heading towards the wreck of the cache and we're going to run deep. Let's see whether or not we can open some distance between us and that helicopter. Oh, that's interesting. That's what the active pinging was about. Contact 6 was hidden between the alligators and our active torpedo picked up on her rather than the alligator and sunk her. What is she? That's... that's not a cargo ship. That's... is that a cravac? I think that's a cravac. Hard to tell after it's been blown to hell. Anyways, heading towards 800 feet. And we're up to 10 knots. head standard that'll bring us up to 20 knots and we're all leveled out now okay so torpedo on the Udaloy has gone active and is now searching and acquired target god I love the mark 48 it's so goddamn lethal It says it's still tracking on target, but it's tracking off-center to the location that I have for the Udaloy. So obviously the Udaloy is not actually where I think it is at the moment. That's all right, as long as the torpedo knows, it's fine. All right, position rewritten based on new information, and that looks like we have the Udaloy this time. 95, and there she is. And she knows what's coming, she can hear it pinging off her hull. She's gone to flank. Countermeasure's in the water, torpedo's detected the countermeasure and is going evasive to avoid it. Sierra 2, Udaloy has been eliminated. Alright, so that's Udaloy dealt with. Who's next? We have one cash in remaining. Looks like one cash in and two transports. There we go, the cash is still pinging, so it's still looking for targets. Those two alligators are getting a hell of a distance away. I'm gonna have to run at flank speed to be able to catch those, unless I can get spots on them before they get out of visual range. Yeah, 
that's not such a bad idea. Alright, we're going to go to oh, 15, 20, 20 half. Screw it, let's go 30 and 30. 30 on the planes, 30 on the ballast, and we're going to take ourselves right up to periscope depth. I need to get solid contacts on the Keshin and these two alligators, and I am armed with anti-ship missiles. It's about time I use them. So, just going to confirm, yep, we have a 95 on Cashin, tube 2 is set, missile away. That should deal with you before you get too close, and once you're out, the fact that we've got maximum signal strength at this point is completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter if they know where they are, they're alligators, they're unarmed. So at this point we're just going to wait for the travel time. So we got 12.2 uh, kilo yards to target. Missile moves pretty fast though, so this should not take too long. And there it is, impact. And the Keshin appears to still be alive after that. You cheeky bastard, you didn't die. Pretty buggered though, so I don't have to worry about you too much, I don't think. Alright, so. Um. Another target. What have we got here? And on the map, that is one of the alligators, and that will be the other alligator. Yep, a little bit closer than I suspect, expected them to be. Alright, so active torpedo. Oh, God damn it! Bug selected the missile tube. Actually, it doesn't look like it's too bad. It looks like that missile may be heading towards one of those cargo ships, so... Fine. This torpedo. Set that. Yeah, release. Torpedo is away. We'll leave the wire intact for this one. And that can go and finish off the cache, and I'll just use the control systems to guide it a little bit. Not going to waste another missile on that thing. Next reload goes to the next alligator, so at this point we are just playing the waiting game. Yeah, in future I'm going to have to double dis uh, disconnect the throttle before I attempt to play this, I think. This is... This is really silly. This is one of, well not the only one, one of half a dozen games that I've actually encountered recently. And impact on alligator. Beautiful. So that wasn't a wasted missile. And next one is loaded. This one's got probably the longest trip, so this should take the longest of all our launches so far. Yeah, in future I'm just going to have to disconnect that throttle. It, it's a really silly bug. This is the third or fourth game that I've encountered that takes input controls from joysticks, even though it's a game that can only be played with mouse and keyboard. I don't even know why the software is looking at the joysticks for controls, so... No matter, I think we've managed to work around it enough for the moment. This is taking a while, don't tell me I've missed. Huh, I thought the missile would have hit by now. Oh, there it is. And it looks like our torpedo just went active. And judging by the fact that it's heading straight for the Cashin, I would say she's been acquired.
So, our after battle report. Utilize sunk, Keshin sunk. It was a Kravak that I got, another Keshin, and three alligators that were transporting the invasion troops. We've got 15 Mark 48s left, three Moss, but we are out of anti ship missiles, so we will need to resupply on those. And we have confirmation that this was, in fact, our target. So, that is the end of that. So, with the Soviets' plans for the invasion of Iceland thoroughly beaten, at this point, we have to wait and see exactly what their plans to do are next. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link to Audible, the sponsor for the channel, in the video description down below. Audible is pretty much the best place on the internet for audio books, with 180,000 titles to choose from across all types and genres. And if you'd like to help support the channel directly, links to my Patreon are in the video description below as well. Anyway, until next time, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, dive smart, dive safe and I will catch you in the depths.